Good morning, everyone. I have a message for you, newest message. I'm going to talk about seasons, new seasons and ditch digging. I found out that ditch digging and new seasons go together. Let's go in our Bible, to 2 Kings, starting with chapter 3. Hang on to this because this is one of we a power. I call it a power message. It should encourage you because as I've been studying it and getting into it, God has blessed me. And I know because of Ruach, the, 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 the Holy Ghost, right? The Ruach HaKadosh. He will touch you and strengthen you. Look for that. Look for him moving. Always in the Word as you read it. 2 Kings. Verse 1. Now, Jephthah, the son of Ahab, began, became king over Israel at Samaria in the 18th year of Jehoshaphat, king of Judah, and reigned 12 years. And he did evil in the sight of the Lord, and did not like his father and mother, and he put away the sacred pillar of Baal. And if you ever know about Baal, if you look up, the, and, and this causes trouble with some people because they don't study, but if you look up the word, Lord, find the definition of it. You'll find out the definition is Baal. Okay, very interesting. Baal that his father had made, nevertheless he persisted in the sins of Jeroboam, the son of Nebat, who had made Israel sin. Hear that? He did not depart from them. Now, Mesa, king of Moab, was a sheep breeder, and he regularly paid the king of Israel 100,000 lambs and the wool of 100,000 rams. 100,000 lambs and the wool of 100,000 rams. Can we say, like, that's a lot of meat? A lot of wool? Whew, ain't money pulling wool over nobody's eyes there, huh? Verse 5. But it happened when Ahab died that the king of Moab rebelled against the king of Israel. So King Jeroham went out to Samaria at the time and mustered all Israel. Then he went and sent Jehoshaphat, king of Judah, saying, The king of Moab has rebelled against me. Will you go with me to fight against Moab? And he said, I will go up. I am as you are, my people as your people, my horses as your horses. Then he said, Which way shall we go up? And he answered, By the way of the wilderness of Edom. So the king of Israel went with the king of Judah and the king of Edom, and they marched on the roundabout route seven days. And there was no water for the army, nor for the animals that followed them. Everyone say, no water. Okay, and they were in the desert. And the king of Israel said, Alas, for the Lord has called these three kings together to deliver them into the hand of Moab. But Jehoshaphat said, Is there no prophet of the Lord here that we may inquire of the Lord by him? So one of the servants of the kings of Israel answered and said, Elisha, son of Shephat, is here, who poured water on the hands of Elijah. And Jehoshaphat said, The word of the Lord is with him. So the king of Israel and Jehoshaphat and the king of Edom went down to him. And Elisha said to the king of Israel, What have I to do with you? Go to the prophets of your father and the prophets of your mother. But the king of Israel said to him, No, for the Lord has called these three kings together to deliver them into the hand of Moab. And Elisha said, As the Lord of hosts lives before whom I stand, surely there is not that I regard the presence of Jehoshaphat, king of Judah. I would not look at you nor see you. Verse 15. Now bring me a musician. Then it happened when the musician played that the hand of the Lord came upon the prophet Elisha. And he said, Thus says the Lord, Make this valley full of ditches. And thus says the Lord, You shall not see wind, nor shall you see rain, yet the valley shall be full of water, so that you, your cattle, and your animals may drink. And this is a simple matter in the sight of the Lord. He will also deliver the Moabites into your hand. Also, you shall attack every fortified city and every choice city and shall cut down every good tree and stop up every uh, well or spring of water and ruin every good piece of land with stones. 
Now, it happened in the morning when the grain offering was offered that suddenly water came by the way of Edom, and the land was filled with water. When all the Moabites heard that the kings had come up to fight against them, all who were able to bear arms, the older had gathered, and they all stood at the border. Then when they rose up early in the morning, and the sun was shining on the water, and the Moabites saw the water on the other side as red as blood, they said, This blood, the kings have surely struck swords and have killed one another. Now therefore Moab to the spoil. So when they came to the camp of Israel, Israel rose up and attacked the Moabites. And when they fled before them, they entered their land killing the Moabites. And they destroyed the cities. Each man threw a stone on every piece of land and filled it. And they stopped up all the springs of water and cut down all the good trees. But they left the stones of Ker Harash intact However, the slingers surrounded it and attacked it. And when the king of Moab saw the battle was too fierce for him, he took with him 700 men who drew swords to break through to the king of Edom, but they could not. Then he took his eldest son, who would have reigned in his place, and offered him as a burnt offering upon the wall. And there was a great indignation against Israel. So they departed from him and returned to their own land. This is a powerful story. Three kings, not to mention all their armies and animals, found themselves in a desperate situation. They had seven days there in the wilderness, right? And they had no water. Now, well, you know the water is a necessity of life, right? Without water, you die. Mm -hmm. yes. The king of Israel starts blaming God for their dilemma. But it was not God's fault, right? The king was a bad influence. Sometimes the biggest problem we have is our friendship circle. Wrong associations. And I tell you out there watching right now, you're hanging around with people, look who you hang with because that's your future. You got to watch it. Right? You need to define your friendship circle. You got to do it. Eliminate all the whiners and complainers. Sift out all the doubters and the powders. Have a deliverance service and deliver yourself from the people with no vision in your life. Have a deliverance service and deliver from people that have no passion, that people want to kill your faith. Stand strong. And let me say this, everyone. Check yourself. Sometimes we're the toxic person. Right? I mean, understand that we make mistakes. We hurt people. We need to apologize. We call that growth, moving forward, being enlightened through the Word of God. You don't fake it till you make it. You face it till you make it. Amen. Get in front of it. Fear. Right? People are afraid of a lot of things, but F-E-A-R, face everything and rise. Hit it straight on. But you got to have a vision, and you got to have a word from God. We're talking about a word from God. I'm talking about bringing a musician who knows God. I'm talking about playing a musician called by God to bear the very fact that that the, the, the Ruach, the Spirit, the Divine Spirit of God would rise up in that prophet. When a musician would play, he's got to tell you something. Why the devil has stole something. And you got the demons out there and people out there prophesying in the devil's name with his music. But you've got God who's also speaking throughout this earth. If it hadn't been for King Jehoshaphat who knew the power of the word from God, they would have all died in the wilderness. He asked if there was not a prophet there. Is there not a man of God that we can talk to? Is there not a man of God that does not have a word for today? Right now, in this situation, in this dilemma, cannot we have a move? Cannot we have a word right now? Yes. Not tomorrow, not five years before, but right today. Jehoshaphat knew one word from God would change everything, even the course of a nation. Bam. Jesus. Remember that old cigarette commercial? My mom and dad both smoked camels. Dad, really. Mom was more Marlboros, but I, I saw her do some camels growing up. And, you know, both of them, two packs of camels a day. Remember the, the old ad out there? I'd walk a mile for a camel. Yeah. You keep smoking them, you won't be able to walk anywhere. <laughs> you know, it just comes to time and a point, right, for anybody. Got to move forward. But if, if you don't want to walk a mile for a camel, you need to surround yourself with people that will walk a mile or five miles or ten miles to hear the word of God. Because they know one word from God can change their world. Yes. 
I was in a surface surface before where a man of God was ministering. He was a prophet. And uh, there was a couple who had driven for over a couple days to come to this meeting. They're looking for a word from God. I'm not talking about coming into a meeting, right, sitting down, uh, blowing up and then blowing away. I'm talking about people come to seek him. Some people that can sweeten and soak in his presence. That's when he speaks to you. Not we sitting around with our spiritual arms crossed. Well, bless me. Uh -uh. Our blessings come from God. Not for being having an attitude, Praise looking at him. He's the author and finisher of our faith. Amen? Yes, he is. They came here and the man, the prophet, had a word for him. Lasted a minute or two. That was it. You know what that couple did? They went right back in their car, drove two days back, and implemented what that man of God said. And it changed their ministry and life. Why is that? You got to listen. God is speaking. And whether we like it or not, God will use a man and woman of God to speak to you. You will not have all the answers. And sometimes the only way to get to there is get to a man or woman of God. Or get to the Word of God. We search, we got the Holy Spirit, we have all that. But look how we miss the mark with all the answers, with all the best weaponry, with all the best training. But we cannot heal that bull, we can't hit that bullseye spiritually. There must be a reason why America is teeter-tottering, Right? People have served. Part-time servants have part-time privileges. We well, need to surround ourselves with people who know God. Boom. I'm prophesying today to someone take action. Take action with the Word of God. Break the drought in your life. Break the drought in this town's life. Break, break the drought in the United States of America. Right? There is a drought whether people recognize it or not. And it takes one word from God. One word. I'll tell you an example. We were up in, uh, I believe it was Sabe. That wasn't Sabe. It was up more north in Africa. And we, we, we got there. I think we had four or five days of meetings. It was a Baptist church, cool people. Uh, they had about 450. There were 500 going there. And uh, that night, I mean, I tell you, the, 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 the size of that place, because they lost half of their, their people overnight. As I was moving, I, was, I believe it was the first night, there was a couple in the back of the room who had a baby. Young baby. I think it was 10 days old at the time. All I said, you two in the back, stand to your feet. Everyone, there's a great hush, hush over the crowd. I think, oh man, what am I about to say? But it wasn't what I'm about to say. One word. I looked at that couple. And I said, I have one word from God, not a sentence, not a paragraph, one word. And I said, that word is victory. And when I said that, that whole place went absolutely berserk for five, ten minutes, running, yelling. I, what in the world did I say? Just one word. It's not what I said. It's what the Ruach, what he said at that moment. Amen. It seemed that she was pregnant in the church. And... Uh, they said the baby was going to be born dead. And they also said that she had cancer. So the fact of the matter was, they didn't know what to do. Half the church was believing for healing. And the baby, that they had the baby, another baby, and the baby died. And the church split. People were mad. Why? We believe God, this baby died. And then what happened is that an elder came up and began to give the story. That's what happened. And said so that one word brought fellowship back. I said, all, all I said was victory. He says, no, 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 the Holy Ghost spoke. He says, because when that baby was to be born, they knew it had to be a miracle baby. And God spoke to both of them. And he says, you'll name this child victory. And they named that child victory, Vicky. For short, but victory was her legal name. I asked him that that was her legal name. Right. One word. One word from God brought that fellowship back together again. Amen. If it can bring a fellowship or a family, it can bring a nation back together again too. Amen. But you got to have people who know how to dig some ditches. you got to have people who can believe in a new vision. In something different than what's going on. Different than what man's been plowing. God's got his fields, and God's got his plowing ways, and they are not man's ways. His ways are above our ways, and that's just the way it is. Hallelujah. Moving forward, this is time for breakthrough. 
This is time for turnaround. Many people want you to fail. Don't. Make a valley full of ditches. That's exactly the word you may want to hear in the middle of a desert, right? When you're thirsty, go dig some ditches. If you have ever dug ditches, you know it's a lot of work. I've dug a few growing up. Don't like it. I compare it to roofing. Heavy work, a lot of work, and especially difficult uh, when the ground is hard and dry. You have to dig ditches, though, and there they are. They're, right? uh, they, had, they were in the wilderness. A dry, low place, and in this place, uh, the word of the Lord said to dig ditches. It was hard, slow, and difficult work. No doubt their hands were bleeding, their backs were sore, their arms were aching, and their shoulders were aching. To top it off, the thirst had become unbearable. I'm talking to some people right now who've been maybe in the same place. That a low, dry place, everything is hard. It's difficult. It takes a great amount of effort, and it hurts just to make a little bit of headway. You have to force yourself to praise the Lord. You have to force yourself to pray. You have to force yourself to read the Bible. You have to force yourself to go to church, to wake up, to get up, to make it happen. And it feels like you're dry and empty, and your mind is saying this, this is ridiculous, and the devil keeps telling you, see, it's not worth it. See, I was right all along. No, 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 no. Absolutely not. You keep moving forward. The devil may tell you it's over. It's dead. It's never going to happen. Those dreams and visions, those prophecies, right, are never going to come to pass. You're never going to enter full-time ministry. You're never going to write that book. You're never going to see those children saved. The devil said you're never going to start that business or never get out of debt or you're never going to go to the nations. Or you're never going to find that right wife or that right husband. When you look at your present circumstances and what you're feeling, that temptation to agree begins to move in that direction. But someone needs to make up their mind and you're going to hold on to a promise. And that promise is built also within a prophecy of the Word of God. To hold on to that dream, right? And keep digging. Keep moving forward. I know it's hard work. I know it's difficult. And sometimes it makes uh, doesn't make any sense. I know sometimes you don't feel like it, but you got to keep digging. On the best, best day, on the worst day, you're digging. You may be in the greatest drought season of your life. Everything around you seems to be dried up. You can see it in the school systems. You can see it in what's going on in this world. It is about the power and the will and the word of God. Moving forward, no matter what. Keeping our eye on the reality of who he is and what he has. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. We keep coming, right? No matter what. Keep on digging. Keep on praying. Keep on praising. Keep on sowing. Keep on coming to church, no matter what. What do you do when you're going through the fire? What are you going to do? If you're going to go through the fire, make sure you're, you're, you're going to come out not smelling like smoke. Right. Let's start there. Amen. It's your ability to keep your eye on God and to move forward no matter what. Just keep walking, right? Yes. When you're going through the fire, Jeez. keep walking. When you're going through the Red Sea and the Egyptian army is closing on you, keep walking. You might even pick up the pace. Okay? When you're going through the Red Sea, pick up the pace. When you find yourself going through the valley of the shadow of death, keep on walking. And you may pick up the pace, but keep pressing in. And what you don't realize is that in the low place where you are digging, your hands are bleeding, your muscles are aching, you got dirt in your hair and in your mouth and under your fingernails, you're, you're believing God, moving in, believing for His best. But what you don't realize is this. You are building a landing strip for God's blessings in your life. Amen. He is waiting for you. You are the one who determines how deep, how wide His provision, His glory, and anointing upon your life. To call upon Him. Right? You are creating the capacity to receive a greater glory, a greater power, a greater anointing. A greater blessing than you've ever had before in your life. That's why you got to stick with it. That's why you can't give up, right? Yes. That's why we keep moving forward and believing God no matter what. Keep moving. I know the devil meant to kill you. I know he meant to drag you out of the ministry. Listen, you young people out there in ministry, get your life straight. If you're out there and you're a pastor's son or daughter, 
Get your life straight. Makes it very clear in the Bible. With Eli's kids, let me tell you, God sought to kill them. Right? Why is that? Because they're sleeping around all the people. And I tell you, sometimes you got something going on in the ministry. You got people in the ministry, God's calling you to a different kind of life. And you have to accept that. So if you're into something, get out of it. Because there will come a time. That's why we have to know. The devil, he means to drive you out of the ministry. He meant to convince you that it was hopeless. That it's been hard, dry. I know you felt like everybody's throwing dirt in your face. But you stand back up and you move forward. And you believe God. And you walk in love. And I'm here to tell you, it's a setup. God is getting ready to flip the script. And he's going to see the fruit of your labor and your faithfulness. You stand strong. God is not unrighteous to forget your labor of love. But not weary. I tell you, don't be weary in well-doing. But it says keep going and you reap. Do you hear that? Keep going and you reap. Keep going and you reap. You stop, you go nowhere. This is somebody's due season. This may be your due season. God, I'm too old, or I'm too young, I don't have enough word, I've been married three times, blah, 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 blah. Don't, don't listen to all those lies. Those are lies. Those are excuses. Don't let the devil talk you out of stuff just because you, you messed up the first five years, ten years, twenty years. Who cares? You don't have to spend the second half of your life getting over the first half. That's a lie. Right. You take that and you give that to the cross. That belongs to him. Don't be religious and wear the cross. Be like, be, you know, be powerful and bear the cross. Do it. Believe it. Stand up for it. If you fall on your face, get back up and do it again. But stay strong. Amen. Be yes, honest to yourself. Yes, it's a new season. I'm going to say it's a new season. A new season. I'm prophesying right now. Jesus. Right? Your spiritual drought's going to be broken. You tell your friends. Tell your people in the family. That drought is broken in the name of Yahushua. Yeah. If you've ever been in a spiritual drought, uh, if you've never been, you may not understand this, but someone who's listening right now has been in that dry place. It seems like all the heavens are brass and it, and it hasn't rained in a while and God seemed to left town and has an unlifted phone number. I know a lot of people feel like that at times. But the drought is breaking. In the same place where the enemy said it's over, in the same place where the enemy said, I'm going to destroy you, in that same place of death, you can make that a seed. He might say, I'm going to destroy your mind. He does that by making you double-minded. Okay? He said, I'll destroy your future, your marriage, and your ministry, and your family, and your health. He wants to break your back financially. But in the same place where the devil said he's going to end, you're going to dry up and die. That's the place where you let the seed go. That's the place where you know, unless that grain of seed falls into the ground and dies, it abides alone. But if it dies... That means as long as it stays in its grave, it will produce fruit, and it will produce fruit. Yes. Then you know the Christians, because they're the ones that are loving. Those are the ones that are stepping forward and finding God what you want. That very same place, you're going to get ready to tap into a fresh anointing, so to speak. And a brand new supply of the glory of God, so to speak. The power, His presence, with a new boldness and a new faith. A determination and a new anointing that's going to... I tell you, when you go into the enemy's camp, you get to take back what he took from you. Amen. Right? He didn't say the enemy's going to come bring it to you. You go into his camp and you take it. Yes. And he did. Ah, I tell you, there's a drop breaking anointing. You've got to do it. Move in. Look at Job 14, 7 through 9. Oh, this is, this is different. For there is hope of a tree. If it is cut down, then it will sprout again. And the tender branch, therefore, will not cease. Though the root, therefore, wax old in the earth, and the stock, therefore, die in the ground, yet through the scent of water, it will bud. and will bring forth leaves like a plant. What am I saying? Do you hear that? The scent of water. It doesn't have to be actual water. You have to taste like water. Just the scent of the water. Right? I'm trying to preach, but I, I feel the Spirit of God saying something that's catching. There's a scent of water. Just that, your hope. Faith built on your hope. Just that scent of water. Just the very fact that you can catch a glimpse 
Sowing that seed what makes the difference, right? Yes. Got to move it. No matter what. All I'm saying is that the atmosphere gets heavy. You keep moving. Somebody uh, needs to lift your hands and uh, give God uh, praise. Take someone else's hand and lift them up and say, you know something? We're going to do this and I'm going to show you how to do it. And help them. Be a blessing to them. Right? The season's changing. Right? you got to smell the water and life and joy and restoration. It's there. Even at the mention of his word. No wonder the devil has fought you so hard. No wonder he's tried to kill you in the wilderness. He knew if you ever got to that water, he would not have a chance. He knew if you ever tapped into the hidden power of God, that he wouldn't have a chance and you would tear him up. The Bible says that, uh, uh, he says, you will not see wind or rain, yet the valley shall be filled with water. Do you hear that? Amen. Someone today is tapping into that. Tell him. The devil thought he had you, but he got you in a low place, and he thought it was all over. And you, he couldn't see any water around anywhere. It wasn't going to happen, right? And he thought that he would just fold your, you'll fold your hands up and just give up and quit and walk away. Right? Throw in the towel and give up. He thought that you would fall apart and have a nervous breakdown. He thought you'd get angry and bitter, resentful and critical. He thought you would sit down and cry and give up. He never counted on you digging ditches in the desert. He never counted on you believing God and having a word from Him and obeying Him once again. The devil does not know everything. The devil thought you, you were shallow, that your faith was shallow, that your praise was shallow. He thought that it was all surface, that it was all emotions. He thought that as soon as it got rough and as soon as it, uh, you know, it got hard, as soon as it got dry, you'd go running back to Egypt. But I got the truth of the matter is, ah, you might have quit, you might have turned around, you might have thrown in the towel, but I got news for you. Sometimes you throw in the towel and God throws it back and he says it's not over yet you cannot afford to give up you cannot afford to give the devil an inch or he will become your ruler you gotta press in no matter what my 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 don't quit, no matter what. Weeping may endure uh, for the night, but joy comes in the morning. Yes, Lord. Yes. A word is all you need. Get a word from God. Settle them with God again. All Peter needed was one word to put the thing that was over in his head under his feet. That's all he needed. One word. And even with the word, the second foot did not get hard. Excuse me. Unless you have a word from God, the water does not get hard unless you get the second foot out the boat. Peter had to get out of that boat. He had to separate himself. In a season, you've got to separate yourself. You've got to start digging ditches. You've got to move from that to, to get from a groove to a rut. You've got to change what you're doing. You've got to change how you're thinking. You've got to change your environment. You've got to make some changes. A rearrangement of the furniture in your life does not work. It never has. It never will. It's people who will stand up and get a word from God. The valley shall be filled with water. You can't see it, but it will be released from heaven. That's the point. The breakthrough is in the atmosphere. And God said, it's coming. It's for you. I will bless you. I will bless your family. I will bless what you touch. Do you hear it? So I don't seem to be blessed. I don't feel it. doesn't matter what you seem. It doesn't matter what you feel. Your feelings are not the voice of God. It's about a time of obedience. As Noah was obedience building a boat 475 feet long, about a 70 45 feet wide, 45 feet high, right? Holding all the animals, probably baby animals, but uh, he, he separated clean from the unclean. God did, and he made it very clear, and it took over about 100 years to build that ark. You know, God, uh, he worked 30 years on, on the ministry in Christ for, for three and a half years in the ministry. 30 years on the person for three and a half years in the ministry. God took 100 years to build a boat he was going to use for about 10 months. I got news for you. God is not worried about what gets wasted and what is not used. He's, he's concerned about the obedience at the moment of that second. Everything that comes after that wave is in His court. Right? We look to Him. Maybe you're on the edge of your miracle. The drought is breaking now. Right now it's breaking in the name of Yahushua. Now can break. You can break it. You can believe God. I'm not talking about a lot of Christianity rubbish. I'm talking about the actual Word of God coming to you. Coming for your absolute. What do you do when you save someone? You rescue them. 
He rescues us. Yes. God so loved the world, He rescued us. Father. Yes, He does. God so loved the world, He sent His only begotten Son to rescue us. My, my. Why did He ask us to be His bride? When you have a chance to make Yahushua your Savior, your Messiah, when you do that, He's asking you to marry Him. How beautiful is that? Without having so much trouble. Breakthrough. You can get past it. That drought, your marriage is breaking. And your ministry or in the finances is breaking. God knows you're alive. Right? You'll get your joy back. You'll get your fire back. You're getting your vision back. You'll get your passion back. But you got to step up. Yeah, I can feel it sometimes. Go. Move forward. Break through. you got to break through. Yes. Yep. Do it. Once more, shovel a foot of dirt. Oh, man. I know miracles are hard at times. I'm sore. My back is breaking. I don't feel like praying. I don't feel like that's what the devil wants to do. Right? He wants us to not care about the Word. Not believe in God. Not have an existence of a creator, even though the whole world says creator. Every time you go outside, look around. Amen. You cannot look in a mirror. That is not chaos. That's your creator made you. Books don't come together by accident. Right. Don't say this world was made by accident. A book was made by intelligent design. Right? How it was written. How it was taken care of. How it was bonded. How it was published. How it was sold through a money system. Right. You can look at it. Design. There's a design in that. That design did not come out of chaos from the beginning. That's a design because there's a creator and every single one of us. you got to recognize that. If you're good at something, it's because of Him. Amen. If you're great at something, it's because of Him. Yes. And He gets the glory for it. Amen? Right. Yes. right. Just one more shout. One more thank you, Yahushua. One more hallelujah. One more dance. One more march around the walls. Man, something's going to happen, so to speak. Something's going to break. Your praise is building a landing strip. Your praise is creating an atmosphere of the power and the glory of God to land in on it. Someone needs to start praising God. It may be already going on. Start praising Him like the walls of death have already fallen. We need to start praising Him like the marriage is already restored. We need to start praising Him like the sickness is already healed, like the business is already started, right? That you've already written that book. Stop praising Him like those children who are already saved, filled with the Holy Ghost, and working in the church, right? Start praising God like them. Do it. Get it. Start praising Him for those doors of opportunity that will swing open. The opportunity of a lifetime must be seized during the lifetime of that opportunity. Take it and move on it. Start praising Him when you already have uh, God, what He has promised you. That He's take care of you. He's promised that. Believe it. I have a hard time. You have the hard time. He doesn't. Amen. Give that hard time over to Him. Amen. Smell that scent of water, right? Mm. Think about it. Someone's breaking through. You're breaking through. You're breaking through over that. Maybe you've been in a different lifestyle, not pleasing to God. You'll break through and you'll break out of that in the name of Yahushua, right? Maybe you don't, you, don't, you don't like your mom and dad. Maybe they're both dead. Maybe you feel lonely. You can break that. Give it all to Him. Yes. Make your life count. You want a new season? you got to change something. you got to dig some ditches. And then you got to trust God to fill them with water. And while He's filling them with water, you got to stand straight, stand tall, decide, decree, declare, and move on to His purpose. You just can't sit around and leak. Jesus. Our net's called to be fixed so we can catch fish. And there's a lot of way to catch fish. It's not just filling up a church. It's about people who read the word, believe the word, and live the word. Amen. Period. A season. Breakthrough. Rain. Now, let's find out. God sent in the water, right? Not just because you were thirsty. It wasn't just because you were dry. It wasn't just because you were in trouble. God loves you, and He wants to meet your need. And power you up, so to speak. God says, I'm going to give you water. In the desert. I'm going to quench your thirst. I'm going to meet your need. I'm going to deliver you. Remember that? When He did it, when He said, called down from heaven, who was that? Called down fire from heaven. It was Elijah. It was His mentor. 
He called down fire from heaven. But you know, he did a lot of things. You know that there was a big thing to take that water. There was a drought on during that time. They took the most precious, valuable thing of the land and they poured it over that altar. And the power of God came down and lit that sacrifice up and the power of God fell. Sometimes you got to use your water in drought. Sometimes you got to do what God tells you to do to make that miracle. Sometimes you got to get out there and start digging a ditch and believing God and praying again, spending more time in the Word, get on fire once again, whatever that means to you. God loves you, and He wants to meet your need. God wants you so filled, so fired up, and so powered up that you can stand up and make the devil sorry that he even bothered you. Right? Look at that. People want to gossip about your this and your that and blah, blah, blah. I feel sorry for people that do heavy drug things, man. And they get free. If people want to talk about them, man, why don't you, why don't you instead of gossiping, why don't you give them some testimony? Talk about the good things that's going on. Yes. Gossip about that. Let's find out why God sent water, folks. Why he did that. In 2 Kings 3, verse 18, it says, But this is the light thing in the sight of the Lord. He will deliver the Moabites also into your hand. And he shall smite every fenced city every choice city and every fell every good tree and stop up all the wells of water and cover all the land with stones. That's what he said. And they did it, didn't they? You know why they did it? Who can tell me? Because he said to. Sometimes God going to tell you something that doesn't make sense. To love someone that doesn't seem to be deserve your love them. Love your enemy. Do good. This is what it's all about. Having a new season, folks. Turn it around. God said now. Chase it. It's chasing you, but chase it. You want to get in the enemy's camp, knock down the walls, and take back what he did? You got to stand up. The devil doesn't want you to hear this message. It's too late. You've got the word, right? You're not going to die in the desert. It's a new season. Dig a ditch. Dig a ditch. And I tell you, you know how you get your best dig ditching equipment? First of all, you got to be saved. Or you be digging, you be digging cement. You'll be hitting that thing. Your wife and God answer me. First of all, you got to know him. As he's meant to be known. To confess Christ as your Lord and Savior. And repent of your sin. you got to repent. This is not about feeling good about myself. This is about saying, I will obey you and I will repent. And that's how you grow. And that's how you change. Right? So say that with me. All the one here and everyone out there. That's listening. I know you're listening. I know you're watching. God knows. He knows your name. Yes. He loves you. Uh -huh. Make this decision. Say this with me. Say Yahushua. Yeah. That's Jesus in Hebrew if you're wondering. Uh, it's, it's a weak translation, but Yahushua is the best name right there. Say Yahushua. I come to you. Change my life. This is a new season for me. I receive it. I and I will stand up, I will stand up because, I am because I am saved. saved. You are my Lord. You are my, Lord. You are my, Savior. You are my Savior. My Messiah. My Messiah. My Messiah. Change, my life. Change my life. I receive this new season. I this new season. Help, me Help me to find your perfect will for my life. Or my life. And thank you for changing me. Thank you for changing me. In the mighty name of Yahushua. In the mighty name of Yahushua. Amen. Amen. I come right now and I break by the power of Yahushua. Any familiar spirits, the spirits of witchcraft, spirits of bondage over you, spirits of nicotine over you, spirits of alcoholism over you, hate, bitterness, whatever that is. I sense something hovering. We break it by the blood yes. of the Lamb. And you be free. Yes. And whom the Son sets free is free indeed. Step away from that. Jesus. Step away from it. And say no. Jesus. And Jesus saying, say no. I step back and I will serve him. Jesus. Yes. That's why we say you take the hands off. Take devil, take your hands off, people. Yes. Take your take your hands off people's kids. Yes. Yes. Jesus. Take your hand off our government. In the name of Yahushua. Yes, yes, Say this in closing. I will, I will obey, you. obey you. Obey you. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. He 